It's been two years since I put out a video covering every cannon TIE fighter used by the Galactic Empire, the First Order, and now the Sith Eternal Fleet. Since there have been some new additions to the list, it's time for an update. Starting with the basics is, of course, the TIE Fighter. They were the standard starfighter of the Galactic Empire and the template on which all the following variants were based. Armed with two laser cannons, they were fast and maneuverable but lacked shielding or hyperdrives. Cheap to make and easy to destroy, they were the epitome of Imperial expendability. Iden Versio had a lightly modified TIE Fighter that carried upgraded weapons. The TIE Fighter Owner's Workshop Manual speaks of the original TIE Fighter prototype that was developed by Cyanar Fleet Systems. The original was unable to fly in atmosphere, so after adding structural reinforcement on the wing spars, the prototype was approved. The heavy TIE Fighter was meant to compensate for the fragility of the unshielded TIE Fighters with reinforced armor and much more powerful laser cannons installed on an extra housing pod. The TIE Advanced V1 was an experimental model that was far less expendable than the standard TIE. It provided the pilot with shields and a hyperdrive. In addition, the solar panels that powered the ship were on the inside of the wings rather than the outside like the standard TIE. This meant the Advanced was more heavily armored, but the solar panels couldn't soak up as much light. Therefore, the panels only powered the weapon sensors and auxiliary systems, and the ship required the engines to run on fuel. The wings also had S-foils that could fold around the cockpit, saving hangar space. The TIE Advanced X-1 was the next step up from the V-1. It also had shields and a hyperdrive, but no S-foils, and the solar panels were put back on the outside. Its biggest upgrade was in the targeting system, which was highly sophisticated and effective against enemy deflector shields. As of right now, only Darth Vader's personal TIE Advanced X-1 has been seen. The TIE Bomber was the Empire's main source of anti-emplacement air support. They could be seen throughout the galaxy as soon as a decade after the end of the Clone Wars. Like the standard TIE, they carried no shields or hyperdrive. Their bombing bay could be armed with concussion missiles, orbital mines, or proton bombs. You might have seen a ship that looked like a TIE Bomber in Rogue One, but those models were actually TIE boarding shuttles. Instead of a bombing bay, the second hull was able to transport and deploy an entire company of stormtroopers. One can also be briefly seen in The Empire Strikes Back, delivering Captain Nita to the Executor. There's an even bigger version of the ship that serves a similar purpose called the TIE Lander. The TIE Interceptor was even faster and more maneuverable than the standard TIE, making it one of the fastest starfighters in the galaxy at the time. Still lacking shields or a hyperdrive, it made up for its defensive shortcomings by focusing on offense. Four laser cannons were mounted to the wings, with two more installed on the cockpit itself. The Interceptor entered production after the Empire realized the Advanced X-1 would be too costly to mass-produce. By the time of the Battle of Endor, the starfighter made up about 20% of the Empire's fleet. The TIE Defender was another experimental design that went into development on Lothal about two years before the Battle of Yavin. They had shields and a hyperdrive, six laser cannons mounted on three wings, and a missile launcher. They were produced at the request of Grand Admiral Thrawn as a response to the more heavily defended starfighters used by the growing rebel threat. An even stronger version existed called the TIE Defender Elite. It was faster, had more durable shields, a better hyperdrive, and a warhead launcher that could fire up to six missiles. Unfortunately for the Empire, the factories on Lothal were shut down by an attack made by the Rebel Phoenix Squadron. Yet another experimental fighter called the TIE Striker was a specialized TIE variant designed for atmospheric flight, although it could fly in space. Its large central pod meant it could be used to transport supplies or personnel from orbit to the ground, or it could serve as a proton bombing bay. Within atmosphere, the Striker was faster and more heavily armed than the standard TIE. The wings could rotate between flight mode and attack mode. They were primarily built on Scarif, and after the Citadel's destruction, they were a rare sight in the galaxy. However, some Strikers were mentioned serving during the Battle of Jakku at the end of the Galactic Civil War. The TIE Reaper was a larger but similar design to the TIE Striker. It was primarily used as a troop transport, but little else is currently known about the ship. The Auto Fighter was created after the Battle of Endor by Imperial Commodore Korda. It was a droid starfighter with no pilot. Its design was based on the TIE automated starfighter from the Legends comic Dark Empire. Korda also developed a walker called the Scuttler, which shares some design features of the TIE Fighter. Another Dark Empire ship, the TIE Crawler, also known as the Century Tank, made its way into canon in a Choose Your Destiny book. It was a treaded tank that resembled a TIE Fighter. A TIE Scout was mentioned in the book Alphabet Squadron, but it's currently unknown if it shares the same design as the Legend Starfighter of the same name pictured here. It was used for reconnaissance missions. 
Likewise, the canon reference book Complete Vehicles mentions the TIE GT, another Legends fighter, but it provides no pictures, so I assume it looks the same. The GT was a precursor to the TIE bomber. The Outland TIE has only been seen once so far, flown by Moff Gideon during The Mandalorian. Its wings had the ability to fold in half similar to the TIE Advanced V1 used by Imperial Inquisitors. It was based off of concept art for The Force Awakens, so it's possible the Outland TIE could be a step in between the Imperial and First Order models. Cyanar fleet systems also provided organizations that fell under the umbrella of the Empire with their own TIE fighters. For example, the Mining Guild received a specialized TIE fighter designed with a yellow color scheme and a notch cut out of their stabilizers which improved their visibility but diminished their maneuverability. Jumping about 30 years into the future, the First Order still used TIE fighters in their fleet. Their standard TIE model now had shields by default. They received upgraded engines and a darker paint job, but they were otherwise very similar to the standard TIE of the Empire. The First Order also produced a Special Forces variant of the TIE Fighter. This model had a hyperdrive as well as shields. They held two seats, one for a pilot and one for a gunner. In addition to the normal two laser cannons, a dual heavy laser turret was mounted underneath the cockpit as well as a Magpulse warhead launcher. The TIE Silencer was a First Order ship that followed in the experimental footsteps of the Empire's TIE prototypes. It was a one-of-a-kind ship piloted by Kylo Ren that had shields, a hyperdrive, four laser cannons, and two missile launchers. It was classified as a hybrid fighter-bomber. The TIE Baron made its debut in Star Wars Resistance. It was reserved for the First Order's top pilots, a fact made clear by its red color scheme. Like the Special Forces TIE, the Baron was equipped with both shields and a hyperdrive. The TIE Echelon Assault Shuttle was a transport craft used by the First Order. It could hold 12 crew members in addition to cargo and was armed with four heavy laser cannons and one light laser cannon turret. One can be seen parked on Batuu at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Little is known about the First Order TIE Bomber. It shared the dual cockpit design of the Imperial TIE Bomber, but its wings were inverted and it carried extra armament. They were seen attacking planets that helped the Resistance after the Battle of Crait. The TIE Whisper Starfighter was the next step in TIE fighter design after the standard and special forces TIEs used by the First Order. Elements of its design were used for the modified TIE Whisper Interceptor seen used by Kylo Ren. The Interceptor had five laser cannons installed on each wing, two beneath the cockpit, and the heavy weapons turret on top of all that. It was designed for extended journeys through hyperspace. Finally, the TIE Dagger was the only TIE fighter seen used by the Sith Eternal Fleet. Its triangular wings each held a heavy laser cannon in addition to the two mounted in the cockpit. They carried shields but no hyperdrive and the red stripe on its wings signified their allegiance to the Sith rather than the First Order. As of right now, that's every Canon Time model. If you haven't seen my Legends version of this video, you can watch it right here, but be ready for some really bizarre designs. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.